This is the Unstarving Musician Podcast. I'm your host, Robonzo. This podcast features conversations with me, indie music artists, and industry professionals. It's all intended to help other indie music artists be better at marketing, business, the creative process, and all the other things that empower us to do more of what we love. Make music. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. How are you, man? It's a, it's a nice day here in Panama. We had rain this morning. Walked the dog in the rain. Temperatures ambient as usual. Uh, it's not raining anymore. The sun's trying to show its face. It's actually a beautiful day. And that's a good thing to be able to say in these weird-ass times we're in. <laughs> Can I say that? Sure, it's my podcast. So my guest for this episode is Peter Rand. He is a keyboardist slash multi-instrumentalist and a songwriter. We met on Compose, the collaboration platform, something you might be tired of hearing me rant about. <laughs> I spent a lot of time um, learning about these things and checking some of them out, talking to some of the creators, some of the users like Peter. I myself, you may have learned, uh, have used Compose uh, to actually collaborate on something with Peter. Contributed some drum tracks that I recorded here at home, which was fun. He's got a great, he has this great progressive rock bit that he did on there. He's got a wide range of styles that he plays, though. As you may know, yeah, I've been obsessed with these apps, and you may also know, if you've been listening to this string of episodes, that I recently contributed an article on Forbes.com covering the space of online collaboration apps. Hope you'll check that out. I will put a link in the show notes. I want to give another shout-out. I say another one because I did it in the last episode. A shout-out to Harry Rock Radio, internet radio station, Harry Rock Radio. And in particular to... Um, the Scarlet Bays Show, hosted by Trish the Dish, which is um, is on air on Harry Rock Radio from noon to four Central Time, Monday through Fridays. I heard from a reliable source that she's been talking about the Unstarving Musician in her show about the podcast, actually. So I thought I'd give her a little shout out here and say thank you, Trish. You're a dish, and. Uh, I'll go ahead and say thanks again to Robert Knowles. He's another one of their on-air personalities. He um, did a little phone time with me this week to help me out with some research I'm doing for the second edition of the Unstarving Musician's Guide. Always good to talk to him. We reminisce a little bit because we, we <laughs> actually went to high school together. Uh, so Peter, yeah, I invited him on the podcast well because he's on Compose, but also uh, because I contributed to one of his tracks. And this conversation gives a little bit of insight into Compose the Platform and why both Peter and I like it. And uh, Peter just published a 10-song collection of tunes he co-wrote and performed with other Compose users. You can find it, I believe, on all the digital platforms. I know it's on the, the popular ones I usually talk about here. So yeah, cool conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Here is me and Peter Rand. So I was looking at your... Um, your Compose profile, and it looks like you oh, joined yeah. back in mid-2008. Uh, uh, How did you... Yeah, well, I, I checked that before because I thought you might ask me. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and so I, I, I thought I'd check. I knew it was around about then, so it's quite early on, actually, in the whole scheme of things when I joined, um, which uh, I suppose that was an early adopter for a change. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, which was quite good. I, I was, I was, I've always been, in, you know, Keen on music and compose was just a, it was just a great way of uh, of um, joining with other people and and, and initially help, trying to go in on their projects and help and gradually getting the confidence to do my own and that's that's how it sort of panned out over the years I suppose. You know? Oh, that's cool. So, how long did yeah. it, how long did it take you? Do you remember to kind of get into doing your own projects? Ooh, probably quite a bit. I mean, I probably lasted about a couple of years just you know, adding a bit here and there and thinking that wasn't really good and that wasn't, you know, and and then, because uh, obviously when you submit a track or, or, or audition for something, uh, quite often it's maybe not what they want. And so, you know, you got to learn learn rejection fairly, you know, <laughs> fairly easily. But obviously uh, one way I, uh, one way I started um, doing my own was, I thought, well, if if somebody else doesn't want this, I'm I may as well start doing my own tracks, and that that's how I sort of gradually moved over from adding lots of 
things to other people's tracks into into more doing my own stuff um and then eventually you get better at that of course as you go on uh, do you hopefully. do you still do much collaboration on other people's stuff or are you just I, I try I, not as much as i used to um so um if i i don't look actively for things to do because i'm usually doing my own stuff so i just you know, I just focus on that mostly. But sometimes somebody who I, you know, if you see a name that you know, and the last time you did something with them, that was quite good. And they were good. You know, you can, you sort of nip onto there and see, oh, that sounds good. And you try, you still try and add something if you can. I mean, sometimes, you know, the skill sets required on what you can offer, but that's, that's the way it goes. But uh, I can usually try and uh, force my way into something. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they don't want it, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah. but no, it's 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 it started off with going on other people's and and the the first track I did because I wrote this down because I looked before and was March two thousand eight. I didn't do it myself. First track I I, I uploaded a, um, a keyboard track to it was a track in March two thousand eight. So that's how long it's been, um, you know, it's been doing it. But um, but yeah, it has been mostly over especially recent years, because I retired from proper work in, uh, <laughs> in 2017. So since 2017, I've had a lot more time to just do this. This is this is my new work, so to speak. And um, therefore, I used to do it, at, if you like, at the weekends or maybe in the evenings. Um, but now I, I set aside time every day, really. And that's that's how I I do it. Um, it doesn't always result in anything, but you know, I try and set aside some time every day to That's smart. to actually for, for for doing music. Usually the mornings because I'm I'm rubbish in the evening. <laughs> I know how you feel. So yeah. did you um, when you were doing it part time or maybe even up until earlier this year? Did you perform at live out much? Uh, we did. Well, I say we uh, back in going back to about the mid two thousands. I mean, I, I for years I played. I played guitar and keyboards and did things, but usually just myself. I didn't have the confidence to do much about it. So I've never had a, a, a background in, in playing live until the mid 2000s, when um, a group of people threw a shared interest in a, in a band called the Straubs, who are an English folk rock stroke prog band. Um, we met up with a load of other people over a number of gigs and. Eventually, the uh, five of us got together. We were in different parts of the country, so it was a practice run for composers, I suppose, because we never, we never, we don't live near each other at all. But um, and we we set up a, if you like, a tribute band, uh, so so to speak, doing acoustic numbers, uh, acoustic covers of theirs. And we also strayed into doing our own songs as well. Um, but that sort of that was around about from 2006 to 2010. Uh, and I, I think our last gig was in May 2010. So you know, it's a long time. Yeah, wow. <laughs> but since then, yeah. Um, so not like you, no. Oh well. Um, I, I, you like a lot of the same musicians and bands that I do. I was just just based on your composed profile, but the Straubs were one I didn't know of. Uh, but I'd looked them up and listened to a few things. They're, yeah, they're very English um, in the sense of folk. Their background in the folk sphere if you mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and they started off as a folk band in fact as a skipple band and uh, that type of thing in the 60s they went to folk then they went to folk rock um rick wakeman played with them for a bit i saw that uh, before yes and um uh, and then they went into sort of a brief a, a brief horrible intro, intro uh, ex, uh, ex, excursion into glam rock in the 90, early 1970s <laughs> and that the whole thing uh, got them a hit single, but um, and then uh, but yeah, I've been following them when when I was like a teenager, and it's sort of one of those bands I I sort of I grew up with, and then I forgot about not forgot about, but wasn't you know that interested. And then it's sort of late in life you think, oh, they were actually quite good. I like that. So you, know, you get get you get it all back again, you know. Sort of yeah. So yeah, but they they were sort of I suppose. Um, Similar, I suppose they they're often compared. I suppose a bit, a bit, to Jethro Tully type of stuff. Yeah, I could see that based on the little bit I listened to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, they're 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 quite they're, they're quite a quite a range of material. Really. But, yeah. It sounds like it. So um, going back to compose, how uh, yeah. 
how did you find it and what drew you to it? Uh, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know how I found and I'm, I'm you know, how, it, how I came across Compose in the first place. I, ha, I ha, absolutely cannot remember how it, how it came to me. Obviously, uh, I don't know what Facebook was like in those days or whether it was, you know, I, I have no idea how I, how I found Compose. I might have just searched on, mm-hmm. you know, collaboration or I don't even if, if, if that such a term existed in 2008 who knows but I just searched on you know that sort of area it could have been actually I used to get music magazines and that's sort of, it could have been something like that um so that's that's how I signed up I think it was a you know as a free member originally uh and for, since after a couple of years I think I've you know decided to pay some money for it and I've been doing that ever since. Um, so yeah, um, but I, I I don't actually remember. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't. I don't think they advertised it as such. I can't I can't remember to be to be frank how I uh, how I actually uh, was sucked into the universe of Compose. But I'm glad I was. Yeah. Have you have you used any other um, collaboration platforms besides Compose? Uh, the, the, not really. No. I tr- I tried a couple, and I don't think they exist anymore. But there was one where the where you you could just send little bits of riffs and things like that and small snippets of music and that really didn't work um that's i think i started that before compose um but uh but no compose is really the first 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 and only i mean i have seen other others since and i've signed up for a couple and never really taken it further as such because i mean you put I, I don't know but i think i probably get confused between all the different you know I've got uh, quite a lot of people are the same on some of these things as well and then they sort of they migrate across the the different uh, platforms I think but um, yes. I, I'm just happy sticking with the one I'm familiar with uh, <laughs> yeah it's the same way as I've used um, FL studio and before that fruity loops way 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 back um, I've tried others but I just, uh, you know, you're familiar with something and you just stick with it, and that, that, it, it suits me. That's, um, as a, you know, as a workstation, that's that suits me. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose that um, I've already. I mean, I'm not terribly active, as you probably have surmised. And in fact, the the one contribution I've done was to your new tra- new gods track. You know, it does have a. There's like a sense of familiarity already. I've been. You may have seen that I've been working on some articles and podcast episodes about the space of online collaboration, and there are these. Yeah, and there are these sort of ones that are. You know, I almost want to say maybe more appealing to the the newer generation because they're mobile apps, but um, certainly anyone that wants to work with their own DAW and um, work on on projects. Uh, and do much of it online. Uh, Compose certainly lends itself a lot to yeah. that. Yes, I mean the the the, the uh, I have got apps on my phone and my iPad for music, and that I've been trying to, you know, use them and integrate them, and that I've managed to get them, you know, so I can play the keyboard here, and then it'll go through the phone, and the sound from the phone will go into there, and the, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. But, um, but frankly, most of the sounds I can I can already get. Yeah, right. So, it's nothing. Uh, it's not. They're not. They're not, they're not so wonderfully unique on there that I can't do them elsewhere. So I've got you know something to imitate the Korg Triton on there, but I've actually got a Korg Triton here, so I may as well use it. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. I mean, but 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 yeah. It's it, the apps. The apps are quite handy just for you know, if you like ideas and messing around on them things like that but I, I haven't really used them in a, in a great deal of seriousness for for doing uh, actual sitting down and, uh, and writing stuff or anything i'm an old person and therefore my profile probably fits um, most of the other old people that i seem to end up with <laughs> composed so uh, i've kind of gotten the impression that there are some young younger folks on there too but i was oh, gonna no. i was gonna say that um i, I mean to a degree nowadays, having the means to record at home is a little bit of a luxury. I mean, it's gotten so much more accessible, but certainly um, there was this other element of Compose that was appealing for me because I have an acoustic drum set and it's kind of my, yeah. it's kind of my main thing. Um, and there's just n- no way around playing, wanting to play the acoustic drums and getting some gear. <laughs> so, But as fate would have it, I, um, I, I just you know, invested in gear for recording, uh, like 
probably February of this year, and then right. you know life sort of changed a bit, and I st- and I also yeah. started coincidentally finding these um, different uh, platforms. For, you know, like the single that I sent you um, that I'm yes. kind of yeah. sneak previewing right now. That was. That was really- Thank you. That was just done kind of old school, but you know, we were, um, three different guys in three different places. And my, my, my guy who was mixing it all, uh, you know, we're just sharing files, um, not, not using a website or anything. So I just sent the stuff old school and (laughs) we went from there. Yeah. Yes. That's, um, yeah. I mean, that's what we do with the strawberry Falls, which is the band that was the, the tribute band I was talking about before. Uh, we sort of occasionally, we sort of, we still are in touch all the time and we, we do occasionally get together and share files and do things. Most of the others, weirdly, they're on Compose, but they, they don't really, they don't either get it or want to be, they're not that keen on it generally. Some people aren't, I mean, some people aren't keen on other people that they don't really want to be involved in something being involved in it, I suppose, if you, if you see what I mean. Yeah. So you, you go on there and you just want me and two of the people that you already, you can make a private collaboration, I know, but, um, oh, there's all this, uh, somebody's phoning me, so oh, there's this bloke in Doncaster or something who's just sent me a, a base file. Oh, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that. But so they do it old school as well. And we send each other, you know, um, web files and all the rest of it. And somebody somebody takes on the mixing role and produces it and et cetera. So but all that's all online now. It's not uh, we we haven't, especially obviously at the moment, but we used to get together every year or so and have a few days. But that's all that's all gone by the board currently. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yes, it's all. So it's, it's, it suits me having little room here because it's, uh, it's it's probably probably a recruiting tool for composers as well. I would have thought the current you know the, the current situation with uh, COVID nineteen and everything. It, it was a lot of people suddenly having to you know not uh, not go out and, and and try and try and connect with people in other ways. And this is this is I suppose one of them. This is a, possibly a good one for for compose. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, you know, it's funny when I talked to Roth Foyle, uh, the founder of yeah, yeah. Compose. He he talked a lot about the community and how I, I don't think this was his word, but you know, well, helpful. I think, I'm sure he used that word, but how helpful yeah. they were to, to new to new users. And as a yeah. as a testimony or test yeah testament to that, uh, you were very helpful to me when I came on. I mean, it didn't take too much, I hope, but uh, I was a little kind of like confused yeah. about a couple things, and you and you. Um, it just sort of clarified some stuff for me, and I quickly saw right. that oh, I need to upgrade this account so I can upload separate files and stuff. So I did, and um, actually, to be fair, most people, are, you know, there's most people. I mean, people are people, so there's different types of people in every in everything. But most people are, are extremely, you know, helpful and friendly. I found, um, you know, when I when I started, you know, way way back in 2008, there were people who who gave me advice and what I should be doing. And uh, you know, send a sync track with it, and so that it lines up with everything, and do this and do that. And if you're going to do this, I, you know, don't play all the way through the track. Just do a bit here and a bit there. You know, uh, things like things that is a, as a sort of novice, if, if you like, I, I suppose novice to to, to doing that, um, which helped. Um, so, and there's people who who always still give advice, and also you you know you can ask. You can there's a community section there. You can ask people questions. You can ask, you know, how do I do things? In fact, I found something this evening. I was watching a video all about loudness, um, which I thought was actually quite interesting. Which I it was I'm not really a, a, a sound expert, if you like, or a mixing or anything like that. I'm not really. I just sort of, you know, play it, and if it sounds good, it's all right. But um, but there's all these technical aspects to music, which I'm a bit uh, if you like backward on, uh, which I found, but I found that really interesting. So, um, uh, lot some people who are, are better than that, and they usually end up hopefully mixing some of the stuff I've. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that that you know you weren't um, didn't you know that you considered mixing not to be one of your fortes. But um, yeah, I, I gathered from Roth that there are, there's always somebody there who can do that. And it's funny yeah, when I listen, like, I'm not sure I've heard all the permeations yet of what's going on with the song that I contributed on with you. But yeah. um, I heard this one and, and uh, I, I think it's one of the guys who contributed bass. And I'm like, oh, he some maybe I think it was him. He did a nice mix yeah. f- for me on, yeah, the, yeah. on the drums. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So 
Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I tend to put, I put the tracks up there, including hopefully the set the separate files or uh, the stems or uh, uh, and usually hopefully somebody else will end up mixing it because uh, I mean I can do it but I'm, I'm, I'm you know I'm a bit of a uh, well, uh, let's tweak this now what does that do I don't know oh that sounds yeah. all right and that's how you that's how I do it but you know there are <laughs> there are certain rules which people tend to follow uh, I have no idea what they all are and then of, of course I'm a friend of then of all the presets that are in all these programs that oh yeah. well I'll, yeah I'll, I'll have it sounding like that thank you very much <laughs> uh, it doesn't quite always work but you know yeah um, but that's how I that's how I do mixing I'm more of a um, uh, I'm more the the, the 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 other end rather than the if you like the back end of it so. yeah I can relate I mean the the quality of drums that I gave you were just um, it's the same with the song that I sent you that I did with the other guys off, off of outside of Compose and I just had decided okay my job being a novice with recording is just to get the best raw sound that I can and give that to the guy yeah. who's gonna it's gonna yeah. mix it for me so that's yeah. all that's really all I've spent enough you know so much time on um, in fact I, I've been thinking here lately as I'm uh, um, being encouraged to write some more music <laughs> Uh, so yeah. I have that I have that in the back of my head as well, but um, is that I would like to learn more about so, uh, you know, the mixing aspect of of working with my DAW and and the gear that I have. So yeah, yeah, I think that's that's you know it's one of these things I keep meaning to to do and then I never get around to it because uh -huh. I'm too oh, I want to do this you know I want to put my hands on a keyboard or do something yeah. uh, rather than read a book about mixing you know yeah yeah. Um, that's, uh, uh, so I, I do a set routine every day, and I come up here, have breakfast, come up here, and stay here till about lunchtime. That's what I do. Um, that's nice. Then the afternoon, I'm I'm available for other activities. <laughs> so that's it. But that's that's you know that's I try and do, keep that as a set thing every day because you know um, it seems to work. I mean, you know, it seems to work for me. So keeps me happy, keeps me off the streets. So. <laughs> Hey, you know, I've talked to, I don't know how much you've explored the podcast, but I've talked to a lot of different musicians. And one of the things I re explore on a recurring basis is um, songwriting and staying creative. And prob probably the uh, theme that always comes back up is, um, it, it's one of them, but is having devoted time uh, to write or, yeah. or be creative in whatever your whatever aspects you're working on. So that I think that's great that you do that. Yeah, it's 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 just it's setting aside that it's so you you know it's it's I don't know it's familiarity. It's like going to work. This is my work now, so <laughs> this is it. What this did is, you what did you replacement. what did you do for your regular job when you had one? Well, for uh, lots of years, I um, I was involved in um, direct mail and direct marketing, and uh, and ended up uh, running a company until about 2012. That 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 folded in 2012, and then I then worked for a bank for the last uh, few years of my. Uh, until I was uh, till I was old enough to take the money and run. So, <laughs> well, good for so, you. Um, but so not nothing um, nothing to do with music at all. But um, but yes, yeah, so, so it was. Uh, but it uh, you know it paid the bills for all those years. So that's fine. I read yeah. um, a book, uh, and I don't think it's the first time he said it, but he put it into a new book. Uh, Derek Sivers, the guy who created CD Baby, he said oh, yeah. Yeah. he said that the uh, the happiest artists he knows. Uh, have day jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I suppose that's that's probably right. I didn't I didn't have the time though then. So you know, it's a it's a but um, but then again, I needed to I needed to earn the money. So sure. um, let's face it. I don't think I don't think I'm going to be any time soon earning uh, mega bucks off um, off uh, off the hundreds of tracks that uh, that are languishing on Compose at the moment. But I don't. I say languishing. Obviously, I don't mean that. But you know. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was I, so on that note. I was, you know, I log in every uh, once in a while. I get pinged regularly about you know different collaboration things that are yeah. happening. And um, but yeah, I kind of look around and go, man, there must be a lot of of tracks. And in fact, Roth told me how many track submissions there are and how many uh, complete, maybe even how many completed collaborations. Oh, yeah. But it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot. Oh yeah. Well, I, I actually worked out again because I knew I was coming on this. I thought, oh, I'll best actually find out how many I've actually done. And I've, it's 888, a nice, nice easy number, I, I, what I've created. 
since I started. Oh, so, wow. That's amazing. So, that's, uh, it, yeah. I mean, all, not all, a lot of rubbish, but still 888 and uh, so joined 300. So that's the, so there's 300 track, you know, other tracks were added things too. So that's the split. Although probably if you'd have asked me the same question after one or two years, it would have been more joined and very few created. But after a bit, you just, you know, as I say, you just went for it, go for it, ignore everything else, do your own thing. <laughs> and people do you. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's uh, it's the other way around so um yeah but uh, but it was quite a because i didn't know the answer to that question i thought i best you know so i've been trawling through the pages on the website just before this <laughs> to get to the end and um so and then i'm all you know yeah found, worked it out so yeah um it's quite a few quite a few do you uh, do you know and i don't know that they um i i maybe have missed something and i'm not sure that uh the company even sends something like this out very frequently but have you heard any news on the next version of the website uh i saw well he's uh, raf has had a, a little piece on the community page there at the top it's pinned to the top of the community page i'll have to check and it if out you go on to version three you, you if you click on that it'll tell you i did i did look at it early on i but i haven't haven't been following it to be honest with you because everybody's obviously putting their suggestions in as to what they want in version three. And I've stayed, I've stayed pretty much clear of that because, you know, uh, I, I, was, I, I was obviously on version one originally, then version two came along. That was a bit of a shock, but that was fine. And I'm, I'm used to version two and no doubt when version <laughs> three turns up, I'll find, oh my God, what's this, you know, but and then eventually I'll get, I'll get, get the hang of it, you know. Um, so I, you know, it's, it's fine. Um, I think, I think, so, so I, I think some of the things like search, how to search for things and things like that and the way it presents it, information, I, I think he's having a bit of a, a look at, um, yeah. because searching is quite difficult. Um, uh, you know, um, and also, the, you know, so like if you're wanting to add drums to things, I'm not sure because I've given up looking by people who want keyboards or people who want whatever. Um, I, I, just, I just look at the newest collaborations on the, any, every now and then and, oh, listen to something. And if I like it, then I'll have look into it further. I, I don't actually, because of the, well, the way the searches come out, it doesn't always really... Um, you know, give you the the full the full picture and, and the current version. I think that's going to improve in maybe number three, hopefully. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I know from talking to him, he has some aspirations to do some some good things. And as a, a new user of the site, I can see that. Yeah, I can see some obvious room for improvement in things like searchability mm -hmm. and the way things were presented. But um, you and we are able to do all these collaborations. Yeah, I thought I I've had, had a wonderful time at Compose. I mean, it's been, it's been you know, it's helped me immensely. I mean, just it helped me in terms of actually learning stuff and becoming better, if you like, at what to do. I'm not saying I'm brilliant, but you you, you know you got to you know in 2008 I was at a certain level. I'm I'm hopefully at a bit of a better level now. I think, and that's a, in no part in the, in some parts are we down to Compose? I think. Yeah, it's that daily so, routine. Yeah, exactly, and daily routine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that practice time. So, um, if I don't know if you ever do this, or if this opportunity ever comes up, or if it comes up often, rather, but if um, y you know, you met some musician, or maybe you know, one of your existing musician friends um, were to were to ask you about it, um, or ask you anything that might make you think, hey, maybe they would like compose. Why would you, what would you say to someone I I as far as wh why they might want to look at compose? Oh, gosh. Um, well, um, one is the quality of musicianship. I mean, obviously, it, it's varied because different people have different skills. But and uh, but the, by and large, there's some good quality musicians on there. One. Two, the community and the help that, that it gives you, by and large, again. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I've had lots of help over the years, as have other people. Yeah. Um, and three the if you if you're if you like say if you've got a, a, a song that you 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 you've got in your head and you want to you've got a certain idea of it it may well turn out exactly like you thought it was going to but it may well turn out that you've got a song that you thought was i don't know uh, death metal and it turns out as a as a folk song because somebody's come along and put 
a, a track on it that, oh yeah, actually that sounds good, this, uh, and, and it takes it in new directions. And you can, you can also obviously quite often get two or three versions of the same song floating around on Compose as, as a spin-off when somebody wants to do a different type of ver version of a particular piece of music. Um, so that's quite, I, I find that quite, quite good. I mean, there's, it, it's, it's educated me and that, therefore hopefully it will educate others who join that, you know, just because you're into, I don't know, country music, folk rock or whatever, the, there's other bits of music which you probably think, oh, I don't, I'm not really into that. And then you hear something and, it, you know, it gets you, it gets you, it broadens your horizons, shall I say, potentially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, music as well. I mean, you know, I I, uh, I got asked to do a, a track, um, a piano uh, thing on a, on a blues, rock and rolly type thing, which I'm not really, I don't really do, but I did it. I, you know, it's it's not it's not my, you know, I don't do you know blues piano in a in a big way or, or generally have done. So, but it but it turned out actually all right, Touchwood. So I was quite happy. Nice. But it's, it's stretching yourself a bit, so you know um, that you you end up doing things that are outside your comfort zone, and, and that's always good for you know expanding what you 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 your abilities are, I suppose. Yeah, as we're talking, or as you're you know elaborating on the the answer there, I'm thinking of a friend who kind of somewhat recently got into recording for for obvious reasons or reasons you can imagine, and uh, he's really enjoying it. Um, and he's also, he's, he's pretty, uh, he's, he's a multi-instrumentalist, but you know, nowadays with the recording, um, software, you don't really have to have a drummer, but it, it is a skill to, to program good drums. Right. And, um, I, I was yes. thinking I should introduce him to, I need to introduce him to compose I th because he's probably at a perfect stage where he, you know, could find people he'd really enjoy working with. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, drums, as as uh, I think it said in your thing with rap, I think drums drums are one of those things that it may well be easier to program drums. It's still quite hard to if you if you're not really a drummer. I I I've tried and failed miserably lots of times to try and program drums in some of my tracks, and I thought oh, no, I, I I just let the drummer do it. It's <laughs> a lot easier, a lot more fun. Um, so, um, so yeah, my, my, my skills at programming drums, that, that is one, that is a step too far for me, I tell you, but, but yeah, he, if you've, you've got a friend who's a multi-instrumentalist, multi definitely, you know, composes something where, you know, if you can do quite a few different instruments, it, you, you know, you've got a lot of access to a lot of different types of tracks you can possibly jump in on or, you know, uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. So have you, yeah. as anything that you've, um, done on Compose gone on to be published or have you published uh, any of your own stuff? Well, strangely, I've just sent you an email just only before, just before because yesterday, was it yesterday, day before, uh, 12 songs, no, sorry, 10 songs, I can't count, 10 songs of mine, uh, which uh, I read, I did the music for and other people have jumped on with, you know, instruments, vocals, some case lyrics, whatever. I've actually just, just released it into uh, iTunes and Amazon and various places using uh, Sounddrop, if you're familiar with them, I don't know. It's called um, Sound Sounddrop? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it's quite quite good in that it's free, so that's quite, um, you know, so it's, it's S-O-U-N-D-R-O-P dot com, I think, Sounddrop. Anyway, I, I've tried, because I heard it again, I got back from somebody in Compose who suggested uh, I might consider it, so I did. And I've been, you know, I've been um, umming and ahhing and faffing around for quite some time with these <laughs> songs. And uh, in the end, I thought, oh, you know, sod it, it's going. <laughs> I'm going to release it. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, you... I'd be sat there in another five years or or whatever, and there would still be, you know. So, so, but it is. It's ten songs. It's called the, the the actual title is about us, and I chose that because it's about us. It's about the community of all these people that have been involved, not just me in the songs. Um, so it's entirely created with people on Compose. Um, and so only just, only just this, this week has actually gone, gone out as it were. But um, there's 10 songs there with, you know, some people involved who you, I'm trying to think, 
uh, kind of thing on the track you've been involved with. Timothy Reed, is he on there? I think he's on there with guitars. There's a few bit. There's Nick Donardo, who's a drummer, who does a lot of drumming on some of my stuff um, on the, quite a few of those. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of people can compose in there. Um, and well, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I found, I found, I found it today. Um, I didn't know for sure if it was you because the profile pic is a, uh, like one of the covers from one of the songs, uh, maybe Lily, I'm not sure, but it looks like, oh, yeah. it looks That's like you're, it looks like you're an attractive female artist <laughs> <laughs> named Peter. <laughs> Well, that's that's my alter ego um yeah so um no i uh that, yeah that that's uh that's lily that's that's probably one of the older ones in that um collection um and that yeah so that i think that's the first track on it but there's about 10 tracks there so you know i'm not i know i'm not we're not going to make any money out of it i've already everybody involved i you know i said to them well we're going to i'm going to do this and if we Anything that comes my way, we will split, obviously, and but we'll. I, I don't think that's. Um, I don't think I'm going to trouble the scorers exactly, but um, but it's it's a, it's a good thing from a point of view of just uh, my own, you know, uh, feel good factor about the whole thing, um, and and uh, currently working on a a more an instrumental album as well, uh, more prog rocky type stuff, um, so. You know, one one that'll be really popular with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I liked about uh, your your track. I was like, "Oh, this is so prog rock! I got to try and do something with this." <laughs> um, uh, so, and and it's funny. I've actually every time I've listened to what I gave you, I'm like, I want to redo it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do, yeah. I, I, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not. It's just sat there at the moment because that's the way with these things. Because I I I write these things, I do these things, and put them up there and. People add things, and then then I'm on something else, and I've forgotten about it. And then what's that track? What's that? I forgot what the bloody thing sounds like. Even I don't know. I can't remember that one. And uh, so you have to listen to it. So um, you know, but that's my memory more than anything else. But uh, but yes, I, I need to I need to probably learn how to finish things a lot more. I think <laughs> yeah, if you have that many tracks, certainly. Um, I think that track is uh, worthy of. Well, the I beginnings like it, of yeah. the beginnings of it are worthy of publishing for sure. Um, I was contemplating uh, throwing up a vocal track. Uh, I just need to carve out the time to do it. But as I was right. listening to one of the mixes today, I was like, okay, now this is kind of inspiring me to do it. <laughs> so, all oh, right. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, please do, because I mean, that's uh, vocals and drummers, vocalists and drummers are, are um, you know, in short supply. <laughs> that's what that's what Roth told me as soon as I as soon as he asked me about my recording and what I play. <laughs> Yeah, well, like you know, keep selling uh, me. <laughs> yeah, you you know, soon soon as you soon as you get somebody knows who you're a vocalist, you'll be there'll be old people asking you this, that, and the other. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, yes, it's um, whereas uh, I think uh, yeah, I, I do I actually I do get asked occasionally as well, so that's nice as well. To add yeah. things I don't always manage it, but I do get asked to do it. So yeah, for sure. Well, I look. I look forward to your uh, to, to to some a collection of prog rock tracks that you do based on just the one that I've um, spent time yeah, listening to and working yeah. on. So, you know, I was going to ask. I've been asking users that I've had on from uh, from Tracked. Uh, the, oh yes, the, the I app. heard that only because of I saw it on your website and. That, but I haven't uh, haven't actually mentioned into it in any way yet. But, well, yeah. well, I I've been asking you know if they had a wish list for things that they would like to see in the app, and but based on what you've told me so far about how you love learning, you know, just learning the way it works, and you get so comfortable, I'm wondering if you want them to add anything. <laughs> yeah, well, there is that. Uh, I, like I said, the search thing, making it easier to search, would be really. That's, yeah. you know, uh, uh, I know there are lots of technical things which people get exercised about, uh, about like you know click tracks and sync tracks and things like that. But you know you can usually find a way around most of them. Yeah, you know it's funny the the sync track. I I get the idea, but when when Roth explained it to me, I'm like, well, sure. I mean, you just put a, a you know a click track at the beginning of the of whatever the whatever you record for them. But but I'm I'm a little baffled at even how that works on in the compose world because as you'll recall when I gave you mine you just gave me your tracks and I you know they lined up I said it should line right up with your track and yeah. I guess it did yeah, yeah. So. Well, they do mostly that's the thing uh, but my uh, Nick uh, the, the drummer who does a lot of work for me quite often he'll, he'll supply the track he'll, he'll do a mix and they also obviously give me the drums and then somebody else will take it and then 
invariably they'll put his drums about one beat or four beats or whatever, <laughs> you know, out. <laughs> and he'll, sorry, that's out again. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it, I can see why people get um, get exercised about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because, so, you know, to, to me, just as a... As a as a, as a as a punter if you like rather than as a um as a as a as the person who's done the drumming oh that sounds all right and no it's not in the right place <laughs> yeah I, well the first time i get one i guess that has one of the sync tracks that are done on on the platform i'll or you know yeah. by someone I'll, I'll probably understand it better i'm sure it's just the same as like when i started <laughs> recording my song um uh, you know what? He didn't even give me when when he sent back the guitar f- for me because I, I I did an acoustic demo for for my collab the guy you know did the recording and played yeah. most of the instruments and I said you know, so what do you think of it? I was hoping you'd play guitars on it so he 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 recorded the guitars um, and a lot of other stuff and sent it back no drums and and he said you know you you can just line up here and, and yeah. it was not a problem but oh, yeah. but I've had other things where somebody puts in a click you know but still it. it Unless it's a complicated song, I, don't, I mean, really complicated time signature. I don't just like let me see where the track is. I'm good. I can. Get. <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically it. Yeah, so most most of mine aren't complicated. So, uh, so. I, I try and make it easy for myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey so, man, yeah. easy's good. Well, listen, it was really nice to talk to you. I appreciate you carving out time. And nice, nice to speak to you and see you as well. Yeah, yeah. Hope to, hope to be involved in a few more tracks in future. Yes, I, you'll definitely see me in there again at some point. Nice to speak to you. Yeah, enjoy your weekend. This episode was powered by ConvertKit. I have been a ConvertKit user since early 2016, and I really love it for the email marketing aspects of what I do. It's more than just an email marketing company, though. They are focused on landing pages, too, giving beginner creators everything they need to start building their email lists. Their new free plan allows creators to make unlimited landing pages and forms, and you can choose from multiple templates, personalize them with design, include an incentive email, create a thank you page, manage all your subscribers, and of course, send broadcast emails. The support is great, and that is important to me. To learn how ConvertKit can help you connect with your audience so that you can make a living doing work you love, Go to unstarvingmusician.com forward slash convert or the show notes for this episode. This episode was powered by Bandzoogle, the easiest all-in-one professional website platform for musicians and bands. Two things that will help ensure you're in control of your music business and your fan-based community are a website and an email list. Bandzoogle can help you do both. Plus, a solid website makes you look legitimate. Serious musicians, singers, songwriters, composers, and performers know this to be true. If you don't yet have your own website, check out Bandzoogle. It was created by musicians for musicians. I use it, and I love it. It's as easy as easy to use gets. And you don't have to worry about plug-in updates and security patches. Bandzoogle takes care of all that for you. The features and support are both incredible. See for yourself. Go to Banzoogle.com to start a 30-day free trial and use the promo code Robonzo to get 15% off your first year. Plans start at just $8.29 a month. That's Banzoogle.com, promo code Robonzo, R-O-B-O-N-Z-O, to start your free trial today. Did you know you can help other independent artists find this podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening to your podcast these days. It really does help, so I hope you will consider it. The Unstarving Musician podcast is made possible through the support and generosity of listeners like you. One of the easiest ways to support the podcast, if you're a musician, is to join the Unstarving Musician community, which you can do at, you guessed it, unstarvingmusician.com. In joining the community, you get tips and insights you can use in your music journey that comes not only from me and my years of experience, but also from the hundreds of other musicians that I speak to as part of the Unstarving Musician project and podcast. Plus, you'll get a free copy of my Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs ebook, the official version, and that's all for free just for being part of the community. You can learn about other ways of offering support by visiting the Unstarving Musician crowd sponsor page at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash crowd sponsor. And if you have feedback, please go to unstarvingmusician.com to 
Get all my contact info. You can text me, call me, email me, leave a voice message right there on that page. Just go down to the bottom of the page and you'll find everything you need to know. I really would love to hear any of your comments, suggestions, questions, whatever you've got. And you can find links to just about everything talked about in this episode at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash podcast. All right, I'm peacing out. (laughs) Thank you for listening and sharing with your musician friends and fellow indie music fans. Peace, gratitude, and a whole lot of love.